Um, we are here at Half Moon Lake, day before the Ann Arbor Triathlon. And, um, you know, one of the biggest questions we always get is, how do I set up my transition area? Like yesterday all day, we we're answering emails from participants and every other one, hey, it's my first triathlon. I know this is a silly question, but how do I set up my transition area? Not a silly question at all. And this happens before all of our tries, and I always say I'm going to make a video. Well, today I decided, yesterday I decided that today we're going to make a video. And I called Matt West, who's here with me, because I thought about it, and who better than to really show you all how to set up a triathlon than a stellar triathlete like Matt. Um, I've been teaching people for a long time how to set up a transition area the way I do it, which works for a whole lot of people, but there are so many different ways to do it depending upon your goals. So that's why we're both here to talk about it today. Um, and just, you know, a few things. I knew Matt way before he knew me because my first triathlon, he won, and then I did another one, and he won, and then I did another one, and he won. And now, He's participating in our races and he's still winning, so thought that this would be a great opportunity for everybody. And we both have our, our new Epic Races Tri Kits, which we'll talk more about later. Um, so now I'm going to um, hand the camera over to Matt to talk a little bit about what he does getting ready to start his triathlon. Well, thank you, Eva. Thank you so much for watching this video. And today we're going to talk about the transition and what I think of when I set up. So first, a good transition starts with a good night sleep. So make sure you're not staying up too late. Get a good night's sleep. You get up early. But when I think about the transition, here's everything set up right now. So we mount our bike by the, by the stem of the seat right here and we're facing opposite direction from the bike next door to us. Now, certain folks like to have their bike shoes attached to their bike. That's for a flying mount that will be in another YouTube video, but what, I, what we see here is that the bike shoe is, all it is is it's rubber banded. The benefits of this is not having to run with bike shoes in the transition area. Now, if you're using pedals that you have clipped in where you're, you can run with your running shoes, don't worry about that, but if you have bike shoes, you might consider this. Now, here's mention. You do not want to do this the day of the race. You want to practice the clip in. So we'll release a YouTube video. And practice, on that. practice, practice, practice. But practice, we practice, will practice. make a video on that. And I just want to say, my shoes forever, and I've been doing triathlons since 1993, my shoes have always gone right here. And that works for me. Very, very good point. So now, let's think of it from a perspective of we're running out of the water. Our heart rate is just spiked. We're kind of feeling a little dizzy. We don't know where things are at. We want to remember where we mount our bike. So we go, okay, we're one, two, we're at our third spot. So make a mental note of, you know, how many rows do you need to count to get to your bike location? That helps quite a bit. Next, when we lay out our gear, I normally like to do helmet and glasses if we're going to use helmet and glasses on the bike. And then our running shoes, I'll normally put a goo pack if I'm running with you in my shoe and then my race belt. So when I come in from the swim, I quickly, I drop my wetsuit, I rip it off, I put my goggles right on top of my wetsuit, and then quickly, I put on my bike helmet. We always forget bike helmet, but make sure you're thinking bike helmet right when you're tearing off the goggles. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. When you set up, do you put your helmet on your arrow bars or on your seat, or do you leave it on the ground? I find it's most beneficial to put it on the ground because it's staring right there in front of me. So I always put it on the ground, but I see, Eva, you have your bike. Yeah, I, I don't have my tri bike here. Normally what I do is I would have it in my arrow bars like this if I had my tri bike, and then I take it and I do this also just because for me, if it's on the ground and I do too much bending over after swimming in a prone position, I get like a little, you know, woozy. So that, that is what I've always done. But I probably would be smarter to have it on the ground and then it doesn't fall off or anything like that. So Absolutely. Okay. So when we're coming off on the bike, and I, I'll show you something here, and this is what the pros do if you watch Olympians and those type of folks. They do it for a reason. It's because it's faster. I find it's faster and easier when I'm taking the bike out, I'm running with it just by holding the seat and then you can turn just by leaning a little bit. You're able to run a little bit quicker if you want to have increase in speed. When you're running like this, it tends to slow you down and maybe put you off balance. 
So again, you can practice this, see if that works for you, but running with the seat versus running with the handlebars, you seem to speed up quite a bit. When you go to rack the bike again, rack it the same way that you racked it the first time. You drop your helmet. Next, how many people forget the race belt? I would say probably 75%. And, and what's the biggest reason to wear your race belt? Find your post-race photos. Exactly. <laughs> so we put on our, our race belt. Now remember what I said earlier with shoes. And to notice here, I've got speed laces. You can pick these up at Kroger's, at running shoe stores. And all it is is elastic laces. I pull out my gel pack. I'm able to run with it. And then just quickly and easily slip on my shoes and then I'm off and go. So I notice um, you don't have socks on. I do not have socks So you socks don't have socks for the bike or the run. I do not. And this is a good point to deconstruct what I bring in my transition bag. So first and foremost, running sockless, I have Vaseline. What you notice is when you're running sockless, your, your feet will develop hot spots. You just put the Vaseline on the hot spots and then the hot spots go away. So essentially, you don't have to run without with, with socks. That's point number one. Point number two, when we're swimming and we're coming in from the swim and our feet are a little bit messy, and but we want to start biking right away and not lose a whole bunch of time putting on socks and whatnot, using foot powder. Just a little bit of foot powder in your bike shoes, it does a great job of cleaning off your feet and allows you to slip right in and slip right off. So that's another part. Would you recommend sometimes, um, and I have my opinion on this, but I'll come into transition and all these people have, they have a big tub of water next to their bike and then a big stool to sit on next to the bike and all, all these things to, to clean up. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are you can clean up after the race, especially when you start using the foot powder and you start using the Vaseline. You'll notice that you're quicker. It's, more, it's a more comfortable experience and you're saving room for your neighbor. That's a personal yeah. opinion. And yeah, and as a race director, for me, the saving room for the neighbor is important because we set up these bike racks today for the race tomorrow, and there are just enough spots for each participant. And each participant has a very small piece of real estate here. I mean, you can see, this is all I've got. This is all Matt's got. This is my little transition area here. And I've actually kind of overstepped my boundaries because nobody's here yet. And then once you start bringing all the stuff, it just it just makes a big mess. So yeah, the simplicity here I think is great. A couple final points. In the transition bag, I always love to have two sets of goggles. You never know when one is going to break or if your partner is going to need one. Anti-glide, chafe, or I'm sorry, chafe, anti-chafe, body glide, does a great job. Probably the most popular thing this year, mosquito spray. Which we actually have in our transition for participants, but not everybody does. So always good to have in your bag. And I love that you bring in the extra goggles because I have been that person walking up and down transition. Anyone have an extra pair of goggles? Anyone have extra goggles? And ever since then, I bring extra goggles. And here, and as a race director, we keep an extra helmet. I think it's hard to bring extra helmets because a friend might forget, but people forget stuff. There's a lot going on with a tribe. So do you have a towel? I do not have a you towel. You don't put a towel down, okay. By the time I get done running, you know, we're already pretty much dry and there's right. towels normally at the end. No towel. No, and that totally makes sense because I always tell everybody that I bring a towel but not to dry off. I never once use it to dry off. I use it more to kind of set my area and I'll bring a towel that I know is mine. You have that one that's always coming through the laundry or something that I'm, I see it because I'm also the one not remembering to count when I come in to remember my spot, running around and then I say, oh, Here's my son's towel, the one he used at swimming or something like that, and it stands out to me. But, um, yeah, I'll put down a towel, put my stuff, and have my, my race belt, and that's it. But, again, I, I don't clip the shoes in because that's what works for me. But um, one day I'll learn. I, at the next YouTube video, maybe. Maybe I'll be the one to be learning that. Absolutely. Less is more has been a great philosophy, yes. and it's less to remember on race day. So there's that. Absolutely. Okay, anything else to add? Well, if you can comment below, hit like on this, maybe subscribe to the channel. We'd love to hear your comments. Eva? Um, everything that Matt just said. I, um, I want people to, to watch our YouTube channel because we have a whole bunch of videos we're going to be making to make everybody a confident triathlete. And EpicRaces.com if you want to check out our races. And we hope to see you soon.